Hello, this is Terry Manning. I am the Technology Coordinator for the Department of Journalism and Mass Communications. This is a brief and hopefully helpful tutorial on using the Virtual Computer Lab. It uh, allows you to access the Adobe software and actually some of the other software that's available on campus uh, when you are not on campus and may be working from a remote location over a desktop or laptop computer. As far as I'm aware, it does not work with tablets, so you or Chromebooks, maybe. I'm not sure, but this tutorial is primarily geared toward users who are on a Mac top. Excuse me, MacBook Pro laptop. It works with MacBook Air, I would imagine, but MacBook Pro is what I have, so that's what I'm teaching. Okay, first, go to the App Store and download Microsoft Remote Desktop. You'll need to download that and install it on your computer. Um, if it pops open automatically, as software likes to do when you download it from the App Store, just go ahead and close it. We'll come back to it later. But after you've downloaded it and installed it, and you can pause here if you need to, but we're going to carry on. Go to the Savannah State website. In the search window, type in Virtual Computer Lab. and it will give you a list of items and usually this one is at the very top of the list. It's the Virtual Computer Lab page and you want to go down to the orange text, hover above it, mouse click down or touchpad down. So before you do anything else, don't worry about these fields here. Don't install any clients or anything. Let's just go to the Universal HTML Web Client. And this should be very familiar to you. This is where you use your Tiger World credentials to log into the network. This is stuff you know well. It may help you to open your window a little bit, just so you can access things a little easier. But this, all the software that's available here, um, it's just like you're on campus. You can use any of this software. I encourage the HTML browser, especially if you're working on documents where you can save things to OneDrive or in the cloud or somewhere you don't have to, or if you don't have to access a lot of local media, like with Premiere or Photoshop, I'll go over those in just a second. But if you just need to get into here and work on something, oh, first, make sure under this gear that the settings are open resources in browser. Make sure that default is selected. You can close that window and then click on Word 2016. You will have to allow access to local resources. Don't worry, it's okay. It will feel redundant when Word finally comes up, but you do need to sign in a second time to make sure you can access files that you've already created that are saved in the cloud. And that's a helicopter flying overhead. Perfect timing. You guys missed out on the whistler earlier. One of my neighbors likes to whistle. It's very annoying. Okay, the quick, not so quick, brown fox, etc., etc. Let's do a save. And you can save it in your OneDrive location, which is what I recommend. Um, you can always come back to it, but it's a good idea to go ahead and save it in a cloud so you can access it from somewhere else especially uh, once you get back to campus. Okay, let's save now. And let's exit this software. It's been a little pokey all of a sudden. Oh, there's always that. Just click on all resources. You go back to the virtual desktop and then you can open other software Works similarly. I know that Adobe InDesign, if you don't need to bring in a lot of local media, if you just want to do something text-based, you can do, you can save files from there to the cloud. You can do that with Photoshop. Um, but Photoshop also may require you to bring in files from your local computer. 
or uh, with Adobe Premiere, the files typically are on your computer. So let's look at that option. Okay, so that was an HTML based workflow for files that you want to be able to save to the cloud uh, or that you can save to the cloud without having to access local media. But say you want to access local media, a file on your local computer on a USB drive, and but you need to be able to work on that virtual desktop, but all your files are here. So here's a solution that I think works better than trying to struggle with HTML based. Go back out to your virtual desktop, click on settings, and now you want to click download the RDP file. Close that. So let's go to Premiere Pro and it's going to download a file. You'll see it bouncing around down here in the bottom right corner. Uh, let's do that for Photoshop and let's maybe even do that for InDesign. But I'm going to worry about Premiere Pro specifically because that's what we are most concerned with most of the time when we're working with local media. So now, uh, and we can actually just sign out of this completely. It doesn't, we don't need it anymore. Not now. So down here in your downloads folder, you see files for a couple of different software programs. And notice that the icon matches the icon for the remote desktop software. So let's click Premiere Pro And it's a slightly different interface, but you're basically doing the same things, doing the same steps. And if you're doing a demo for somebody, make sure you don't have show password selected. That's not good. Premiere Pro is gonna come up in just a second. And we're going to do a new project. And I've been playing around with this a little bit, so we're going to call this Untitled uh, 82. This is about the 82nd time I've done this. Uh, go to HDV. I think the default is DV, but we don't shoot on 30-year-old TV cameras, so HDV is the capture format. Click OK. And again, the challenge with any of this is getting your local files to the remote computer. So go to Finder. And let's find the files that we want to work with. In this case, it's a couple of Killing Eve trailers. I downloaded from somewhere, I won't say. But it's a tube that works good for me and for you. We're going to select three trailers for three different seasons. Right click, copy three items. Then we're going to go back to our virtual workspace. Click down in the media browser area. And where it says File import and this will likely be an empty folder but I went ahead and pulled over some movie clips and a couple of photos so you can see how it works but um, basically when you get to that folder just right click and click paste and it'll take the files from your local computer and copy them over to the virtual documents folder and I want to actually do this I'll show you how to do this with some uh, pictures I'm doing, pictures I'm using. Um, let's grab a couple of these. We'll just grab some stuff at random. Again, right click or command C. And then when you come to the virtual workspace, select that place where you want them to be. Right click and paste. Now I'm doing this quickly because um, if you do it with large files, it's really slow. You see these are just JPEGs, and they are taking a fair amount of time. There's just, what, three JPEGs? Four? And you see how slow they're moving. So if you, you want to use Ethernet if you have large files, or you want to try to do this at a time of day when it's not so busy. But um, at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday, on a weekday evening, it's kind of busy here. Okay, so that took about, what, 30 seconds for 3 megabytes, so you can imagine how long it would have taken for these files. But, since I've already copied them over, let's select them and open. I don't know about dragging and dropping on Windows computers, I haven't done that in a while. So, let's see, 3, 2, 1. Let's get the first one. OK, 
Okay, looks good. Check your endpoint. Check your out point. One little cheat I like to do sometimes is to drag one of the clips over if I know it's going to match my final output, just to sort of cre automatically create a sequence with the settings that I want, then I'll take the clip off. So then as I work through, I can just do in, out, and insert. And I want to be very quick about this because I don't want to do a long file anyway. Remember, it's going to take forever. Um, out, and insert. Okay, so we have 48 seconds, that's enough. Let's export this bad boy. File, it's just like if you're in it, well, what do I always say? File, save. Anytime you do something that matters, save. Then do the next step. So export, media. Those wonderful settings we always use, H.264, match source, high bit rate. Click on the blue letter so you can tell it where to save that file. This is our Killing Eve test because that's the name of the TV show. I do want to replace the existing file because it came from a previous test. And you come to the bottom of the screen and click Export. And again, I do want to replace that file. So it's a 48 second file that says it's going to take about 36 seconds, I will do a fast time lapse on this so you don't have to sit here with me in real time. Okay, so that's done. Um, now, you've built your project, you've done everything you need to do, now you've got to figure out how to get that final file from the virtual computer back to your local computer so you can upload it and finish your project. So we're going to do a reverse of the little fake we did earlier. Go to File, Import. This is our final exported file. We did it in the Adobe folder. Killing Eve test is 60 meg. That's not that long. Right click, copy. And before we do anything else, let's go out to the finder. We're gonna save this to the documents folder. And let's just right click here. So just like we selected, copied, and pasted from the local computer to the virtual computer, when we're done with the final thing, we're going to go in and do the exact opposite. We're going to copy from the virtual computer using the clipboard, copy from there, back out to the local computer. And when it finishes, um, I, think the, I think the file size I saw was about, what, 60 megabyte? So when it finishes, you want your local file to be about that size. It may be a little bigger, but if it comes over at half or even one quarter of what it was on the virtual side, then you know something's gone wrong. So let's give it a few seconds. It was a 48 second clip, a 60 megabyte file. Let's see how long it takes to copy it from there back to here. Here being the local computer. And I would not close anything until everything I needed had copied out. Okay, so let's look at the Killing Eve test. Okay, looks like looks like it made it. Uh, if I want to double check, I go back over here into the virtual, click cancel. And I can do playback over here just like I'm doing on my local computer. Now, that's one thing you might want to keep an eye on, is uh, reduce the resolution of the playback, just so you don't get as much stuttering. But remember, you're doing this over a network, and it didn't stutter on the local computer because it's on your local computer. So, again, Ethernet probably helps this a little bit, but you know, it's a, it's a limited solution, but it is workable. And this is something that you guys have available to you now. When you're done and you click exit, you don't go back to the virtual desktop anymore. Everything is just, you're gone, you're out. 
If you wanted to open another one of the programs, you could just open the RDP file for that program. Or if you are done done, you know on the Mac, you just hit Command Q and quit. So I hope that helps. Um, I know it's 20 minutes, but maybe that 20 minutes will save you, you know, a couple of hours of pulling your hair out. The good news is that I will include in the email, um, if you listen to this first, is that hopefully by October you guys will have access to the real Adobe software without having to use the virtual computer lab. But in the meantime, this will get you over the hump. So I hope this helps. All right, you guys have a good evening.